Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are not already, please remember to subscribe to see more of my content and hit the bell notification button to be notified when I post new videos. If you like this look, then please give the video a thumbs up and if you would like to see an in-depth review of this palette, much like my Urban Decay Full Spectrum and Ultimate Naked Basics review, then please let me know in the comment section down below. This is still one of my favourite looks that I have created with this palette. It's a structured duochrome effect halo eye and if you'd like to know how I created this look, then please keep watching after you subscribe. Subscribed. Love you. So we're going to start off using the MAC Paint Pot in Painterly to cover the discoloration on our eyelids and to give us an even base to work upon and act as an eyelid primer so that the shadow won't crease as it is worn throughout the day. To set this I'm going to be using the NYX No Filter Finishing Powder in the shade Light Beige. A translucent powder would probably be better for doing this as the colour of the powder won't mix with the eyeshadow shades but it's what I had to hand and it worked really really well but I would recommend a translucent powder. We are going to go straight in with Creamsicle from the Jaclyn Hill palette and apply a small amount of the product to one side of our Sigma E40 Tapered Blending Brush and this has become my favourite brush. The side that's coated with the colour should face upwards towards your eyebrow so that the clean side of the brush is against your eyelid applying no colour. Pull the colour through the socket of your eye using windscreen wiper motions and make sure that you apply these crease colours lightly. Build them up gradually as you don't want them to overpower the blue and purple in the look. They're just supposed to be a soft transition. Once you're happy with the intensity and positioning of creamsicle, take butter and repeat those exact same steps but don't extend the colour as high towards the brow bone so that there is a gradient from the yellow to the caramel shade. Hold your brush towards the bottom when creating circular motions to blend the two colours together. It'll make your strokes a lot more light and therefore the blend of the colours will be more seamless. That soft crease needs to blend with the dark purple, so I'm just going to deepen the crease ever so slightly to make my life a little easier using the shade Pooter. <laughs> with this shade, try to stay very close to the socket of the eye. The shades in this palette blend together so seamlessly. Within the palette, I usually see colours that look as though they would create an effortless gradient, but then the undertones make it so that it looks muddy. But the undertones in this palette are perfect and they complement each and every shade. I'm so impressed by the neutrals and I'm so happy that I've struggled to find comparable shades in my current collection. Just makes it even more worth having this palette. Now on a pencil brush by Spectrum, take a small amount of the colour Royalty and use windscreen wiper motions once again to initiate distribute the colour straight through the eye socket. I keep saying small amounts because the colours in this palette are so pigmented that it would be very easy to apply too much colour with what you'd possibly think was a normal amount of product. Swap between a pencil and a blending brush to distribute and smoke the colour evenly. This colour is slightly shimmery and I don't usually enjoy putting frost finishes through my crease. But because we have that matte caramel shade running through the crease, the purple does look like it's applied to the lid. It just creates that illusion because of the specks of frost catching the light. The right colours in this palette are shimmers and frosts and there is nothing worse than opening a palette and seeing a colour that you really love if it were matte but there isn't a single colour in this palette that I would want the formulation of to be different. The purple would not be as dazzling if it was matte so I actually do love it. There is a perfect ratio of matte to shimmer in this palette which is so difficult to get in my opinion. I just really enjoy using this palette. Take that same shade on a dense flat brush to pack the colour onto the inner and outer corners of the lid. Jacqueline recommends applying the colours with your fingers for the best colour payoff but I personally feel I have more control with the brush and that's why I'm doing it this way. Once you've done this, take some concealer on a flat shader brush with an oval edge and begin to cut crease in the centre of your lid and clean up the centre to ensure that the blue shade has a neutral, slightly tacky base to be placed onto. This will just ensure that the colour stays all day and is more true to the pan colour when it is applied. Now 
Now take Pool Party and apply this on top of the central block that you've just created. You could apply the shade with your finger to increase the pigmentation, but I personally prefer using the brush, so that's what I'm going to do. Once the colour is on the brush, you could spray some water or setting spray over it to change the consistency of the formula into a kind of foiled effect, which will increase the pigmentation, but I wanted this colour to be a soft formula. Be sure to get the blue colour right up to the cut that you've made, it'll all look super clean and just make the overall look a lot more difficult than it actually is. <laughs> Now it's time to blend those two colours together. So once again, take that purple shade Royalty and lightly wipe this over the very edge of the blue colour. Wipe outwards from the centre and it will drag the turquoise colour out into the purple and help to mix and blend those two colours together more seamlessly. If you feel like you've covered too much of the blue shade with royalty, just take Pool Party once again and tap over the bridge where the two colours meet and repeat this process until you're happy with the blend. I'm taking an angled brush by Spectrum as this has more flat and dense bristles to give me more control and take the colour butter and brush this underneath your lash line. I usually pull this initial transition colour to the socket of my lower lid just above the bone. Your brush should naturally sit on top of this bone and it just ensures that the colour isn't dragged down too far and then enhances your under eye circles because no one wants that. Using an even more dense flat shading brush, I'm going to apply Royalty just below my lower lash line as this shade is on the outer corner of my top lid. I always like to pull this colour onto my lower lash line to join the whole look together. The darker colour below the lashes will also create the illusion of thicker lashes and I'm going to do the same on the inner portion of my lower lash line leaving the centre part blank as I'm going to mimic the halo eye design that is on the upper lid. So using a pencil brush, take Pool Party and apply this colour in the centre of the lower lash line where you've left the space for Team Royalty. This whole look is going to create the illusion of larger circular eyes as the attention is drawn towards the centre of the lid with the lighter shimmery colour catching the light. So to finish off the eyeshadow, take Faint and apply this colour to the inner corner of the eye to brighten. If you're not sure about using the pink shade, Beam would also be a great option. It's a very similar colour to Max Nylon and if that's the highlight you like then that's going to be really really good. This look definitely does not need winged liner, especially if you're aiming for that doe-eyed look. However, if you want to add an upward lift like I usually do with my eyes, take a jet black eyeliner. I'm using the Sigma Linase Liquid Liner and this is the most intense black liner that I've ever used. It dries to a matte finish, which I love, and the brush is so precise to give you that sharp point at the end that you want with the cat eye. However, if this liner is touched when it is dried, it does tend to crumble, but that's okay because if you were to touch your eyes, you'd probably ruin your eye makeup anyway so it's never usually a problem because you don't touch your eyes but draw a thin line along your lash line to thicken and darken the appearance of your natural lashes and then draw a long straight line from the outer corner of your eye extending up to the tip of your eyebrow that is my usual point to go to use the edge of the liner to place your brush and draw a line from this point to the center of your eyelid to create a triangle shape fill in this triangle with the black liner and you should have the perfect wing. Easy peasy. <laughs> now add an eye pencil of your choice to the lower lash line. I'm using a NYX Live Pencil in the shade Sway so that the eyeshadow colours melt together into the waterline. You could also use an aqua blue colour, a natural cream colour to open up your eyes or a black colour to close your eyes and make it a little more sultry. It's honestly your choice, all will work. After that, apply some mascara to the upper and lower lash line. This is the Gel Eyes Mascara by NYX that I'm using and I really am enjoying using this mascara.
Then finally, add a pair of lashes of your choice. With this look, I'd recommend either wispy lashes or lashes that are longer on the outside and shorter on the inside just because it complements it a lot more. So that's the completed eye look. If you've enjoyed the tutorial and found it helpful, please remember to like this video and do not forget to subscribe to my channel to see more tutorials like this one. If you end up recreating this look, definitely tag me on Instagram. All of my user handles are linked down below in the YouTube description box. Thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully see you in my next video. Bye!